Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm super excited because we finally get to take a look at a brand new mini PC that I've been waiting on for a little while. Now this thing by itself definitely packs some power and we can add tons of storage to it. This is coming to us from a company known as AU Star, and on the channel we've taken a look at a few of their mini PCs, like the God 07, which is kind of a cyberpunk inspired mini PC. But what makes this one so interesting, their new Gem 10, is the fact that it actually has an Oculink port up front. It also supports USB 4 running at a 40 gig protocol, and you can add three PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSDs in this super tiny mini PC. I was actually expecting this to be much larger, but it's looking like the smallest mini PC with an Oculink port that I know of so far. And if you're not familiar with Oculink, basically this is going to allow us to connect an Oculink eGPU. And with Oculink, we can get much better performance out of our eGPU as opposed to USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 because Oculink is a much faster interface and in my experience, it's more stable. It runs at up to 63 gigs as opposed to USB 4s or Thunderbolt 4s 40 gig. So we can get some awesome performance here. And another great thing about this mini PC is the Oculink port does not occupy any of the M.2 slots. Overall, I do like the form factor. I think it's a pretty good looking mini PC. In this video, we've definitely got a lot to test. But before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Newegg and Veilstorm. Now, if you're not familiar with Veilstorm, that's totally fine. We can head over to Newegg's website and you can see that they build custom desktop PCs. They've got a lot of great stuff to offer over on Newegg and I'll leave some links in the description. But these PCs are designed for optimal performance at every budget and they provide a unique gaming experience tailored to each individual's vision and style. They also offer lifetime support for each of their custom PCs and they're assembled in Oregon, so right here in the US. Taking a look at the product page over on Newegg, you can see they offer a range of different prices for their custom PCs. Now, I think the lowest end one right now is $799 with a Core i5, but you can see they've got the mid-range covered, and they've even got the higher-end range covered. Coming in pretty expensive, but you know, if you're looking for something top of the line, ready to go out of the box, they've got the i9-14900K with an RTX 4090. So no matter what your budget is, Veilstorm definitely has you covered, and I'm actually trying to get my hands on one of these right now. I want to do a full review, so keep an eye on the channel. But if you're interested in learning a little more about these custom PCs from Veilstorm over on Newegg, I'll leave some links down below. And when it comes to Oculink eGPUs, you can build one pretty cheap using parts over on Amazon, or you can pick up a pre-made one. Now there's two main ones on the market right now. You've got the 1X GPU and the GPD G1. I think we're going to be using the GPD G1 in this video, but we definitely want to test out the PC without an external GPU first, just to see how this thing performs because it is packing a pretty powerful APU and much faster RAM than we see in many PCs that are on the market right now. Inside of the box, along with the AU Star Gem 10, what we're going to get here is a mounting system. We've also got some thermal pads for those NVMe SSDs we can install here, and a smaller 120 watt power supply. I guess it's a GAN power supply. I've been seeing these pop up quite a bit with these mini PCs, and it does make a difference. We don't have to worry about a giant brick being bigger than the PC itself. When it comes to I.O., up front here we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, two full-size USB 3.2 ports, USB 4, and again it is 40 gig, plus our Oculink port right here. Not much going on around the sides, but this does have a pretty beefy cooling system given the form factor of the unit. And of course, around back, we've got our power input. They are utilizing a barrel jack. This is something I love to see. Some of these new ones are coming out with USB Type-C, and I just like knowing that I can get that power delivery over that barrel jack. We've also got two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, two full-size HDMI ports, and two more USB 3.2 ports. In total, without an eGPU connected, we can do three displays out utilizing the dual HDMI on the rear and USB 4 up front. Before we dive into the specs, I wanted to give you a look at the internals here. Now this actually utilizes LP DDR5 RAM, so it's soldered to the board. I've got the 32 gigabyte model, but you can see we've got an aluminum cooler down here for the M.2 drives, and we can add three of them right here. PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSDs. So when it comes to storage, we can add quite a bit with this unit. And even without an eGPU, this thing isn't a slouch all by itself. The AU Star Gem 10 is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS. 
8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz and a boost up to 5.1, built-in Radeon 780M graphics based on RDNA 3, 12 CUs up to 2700 megahertz, and another thing that kind of sets this apart from other mini PCs in this form factor is the RAM. This is using LP DDR5 at 6400 megatransfers per second. I've got a 32 gigabyte model here. And usually when we see these PCs powered by the 7840HS, they're using SODEM DDR5 up to 5600 megatransfers per second. So we do have faster RAM here comparing it to other minis on the market right now. We can also add up to three 2280 M.2 NVMe SSDs, supports PCIe 4.0 across the board. We've got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, and this is running Windows 11. First off, I'm gonna be running some tests on this mini PC without an eGPU connected over Oculink, but I wanted to show you what I have here. The new 1X GPU. Basically, what we've got here is an enclosure, doesn't have an internal power supply like the G1. It's actually an external power supply, but this will add a Radeon RX 7600 MXT up to 120 watts with the turbo button up front. You can also add an M.2 SSD to this, plus we get extra I.O. Now, one of my favorites is actually the GPD G1. It's using the same GPU, so the AMD Radeon RX 7600 MXT, but the power supply is internal with this. All you need is a lead from the wall to power this. And both of these will support either USB 4.0 eGPU functionality or Oculing. I've got the 120 watt BIOS flashed to this one here, and this is what we're gonna be using once we get to it. So obviously one of the main features with this new mini PC is the fact that we have that Oculink port, but I did want to run some benchmarks here and test out a few games on the iGPU. And as you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 7840HS. And of course, we've got that Radeon 780M iGPU. And I have dedicated eight gigabytes of VRAM from the BIOS. This has 32 gigs at 6400 megahertz soldered to the board. It's non-user upgradable, remember that. And performance is on par with other PCs using the same exact APU. And uh, I did want to show you the TDP here. This is something I always check with these mini PCs. Some manufacturers set it real low, some set it high. Run a stress test here with CPU-Z, right there at 65 watts. Now we could definitely use a third-party application to get this up, or we could go into the BIOS and adjust the TDP from there. But we're going to leave it here, and I have seen it kind of boost up to around 70 but we're mainly around 65. Now, when it comes to gaming on the 780M all by itself, it's really not that bad at lower settings and lower resolutions. Built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, low settings, 1080p, 63 FPS. Obviously, taking that resolution down will net us a little more. Next up, we've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and I've been pretty impressed with the performance using iGPUs in this game. Very well optimized, and when you get down to it, there's a lot of settings we can change. I'm basically in performance mode, which does enable FSR, and this basically set us to 50% resolution scale, but we got an average of 119 FPS. Not bad, and it still looks pretty good. And the final game I wanted to test here on this iGPU was Cyberpunk 2077. Low 1080p with FSR set to performance. We're seeing an average of around 73 FPS, but we can actually get more out of this by using AMD's new fluid motion frames. I'll tell you, it really does help out on these iGPUs, but it introduces latency. What I'm gonna do here is enable it from the Adrenaline software. Basically, what this is gonna do is generate extra frames to give us a higher frame rate. Game should be a bit smoother, but unfortunately, Afterburner will not recognize frame generation, so we have to use AMD's built-in monitoring system. I'm gonna have both on screen because I wanna show you exactly what I'm talking about here. And I'll put this in the lower left-hand corner. Back into the game with fluid motion on. Our original FPS is up in the top left-hand corner with Afterburner. It actually dropped us down a bit. You can see that it does go down under 60, but if we take a look at AMD's monitoring system, we've actually doubled the FPS. So we're over 100 FPS on average with fluid motion frames on, but we've added an extra 30 milliseconds of latency. So when it comes to online competitive games, I wouldn't be using Fluid Motion, but I've been testing this out on the ROG Ally and other handhelds with the 780M iGPU. It's not bad for single player games, and uh, you know, I can definitely get by using it. But one thing I have noticed is since we can't use VSync with Fluid Motion on, is screen tearing, and it is worse with some games, 
Cyberpunk 2077 seems to be one of the worst here for screen tearing on the 780M. I plan on making a full video using some handhelds very soon, so keep an eye to the channel, and right now it's a little gimmicky. Hopefully it gets better in the future. So now it's time to move over to something a bit more powerful. Just to give you a demo on how to connect everything, you will need power from the wall to the eGPU. We're also going to be running our video out to our monitor from the eGPU, and all we really need to do is plug in the Oculink port from the mini PC, the Gem 10 here, and it is up front to whatever eGPU you're going to be using. These Oculink cables do come in different sizes, and another thing about Oculink versus like Thunderbolt 4, you can actually have a much longer lead here and not lose any performance at all. But there is one downside, it's not hot swappable like USB 4, so you will have to power down the mini PC and the eGPU to connect it, and then you can boot it all up and it'll be working. Now that we've got the Oculink eGPU connected, everything looks the same here. Still got that 7840HS, but instead of using the Radeon 780M graphics, we're now connected to the Radeon RX 7600MXT. Lot more power, 8 gigs of VRAM. This will do up to 120 watts. So real quick, we'll just run Furmark. GPU power, right there, 110, and when it really needs it, it will boost up to 120. Temps on this thing do stay pretty cool. Does get a bit louder, but you know, since we've got that extra power there, let's say a base of 80 to 120, we can definitely extract more performance out of this unit. So far through the video, we haven't seen any GPU benchmarks, and that's because I wanted to run it on the iGPU and the external Oculink eGPU. So let's go ahead and take a look at those now. Just going through 3D Mark, First up, Night Raid on the 780M, 25,834, and of course that 7600 MXT is much higher, coming in with over 54,000. Fire Strike, 7,861 on the iGPU, 25,862 on the Oculink RX 7600M. And finally, we've got Time Spy, iGPU 3,363, and it's not a bad score at all for integrated graphics, but when we move over to that 7600 MXT, it's way up there with an impressive 10,270. So yeah, I mean, just taking a look at these synthetics, of course this eGPU is going to beat it out, but let's move into some real-world gaming. Going back to the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p, Ultra, we got an average of 136 FPS with this eGPU connected. Remember, on the built-in iGPU, we had to take it down to low 1080, and we only got an average of 63. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 definitely performs much better with the RX 7600 MXT, and with this, we could take it up to Ultra 1080p, and we didn't have to use any kind of resolution scale, so we're at 100% resolution 1080p Ultra. We had an average of 128 FPS. And of course, we had to go back to Cyberpunk 2077, but instead of running this at low with FSR, we're now at 1080p Ultra, no FSR, and we're seeing an average of around 85 FPS. So this really does up that performance, and it's really going to be up to you if you want to get a PC like this to support an Oculink eGPU. Personally, I know it makes more sense to have Oculink on a handheld. That way, when you're traveling with a handheld, you've got the iGPU, you get back home, you can go ahead and plug it in. But this may have a place for some people out there who travel with their mini PC. Overall, I think the AOSTAR Gem 10 is putting out some really good performance, even without that Oculink GPU connected. You can definitely get some gaming at lower resolutions, lower settings done on the iGPU, and then when it's time to really up that resolution, we have the option of Oculink. And I'll tell you, Oculink eGPUs do perform much better than Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 eGPUs. Keep in mind, 40 gigs on USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4, and we can do up to 63 with Oculink. So you can definitely squeeze more performance out of your external GPU when it's connected over Oculink. The cooling system they opted to use in this mini PC is definitely working really well with that 7840HS. And, you know, if you're interested in learning a little more about this PC, I will leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Gem 10, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. I'd love to run Linux on this with an Oculink eGPU. That's something I personally haven't tested yet. So if you want to see a video like that, let me know in the comments. And it'd be really cool if you could hit that like button or think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.